So here I am in my little bike shed, this is my shed now, um, ready to talk to you about 2021 goals um, and just a little catch up um, about what's happened since my last vlog um, where I had broken my foot. So I am back running and I am back building up following the stress fracture. So it's just been intervals and building those up gradually, um, keeping it all easy, but just getting back into the swing of things with running um, and building up time on feet whilst I'm running. Um, and that's all going really well. So this is the third run back. Um, I say run, it's just run walk intervals at the moment, just to see how the foot responds, whether it is actually ready. Um, but so far, so good, really positive. So increasing the run interval slightly. Today it's three minutes running with one minute walk. As you can tell, I'm a little bit out of per. Um, I'm certainly not feeling fit. Uh, you know, I'm literally just running three minutes. But anyway. Whilst I was off with a stress fracture, I did do lots of cycling um, and I found a little bit of a love for that and that will feature in my 2021 goals, but I will talk more about that. Um, so I had fun out on the trails, um, on the mountain bike. So today it is man versus bike. Uh, a very fit man with a very unfit <laughs> cyclist. So far, this is utter hell. Mark's had to loop back a couple of times to make sure that I'm still alive. <sighs> so now it comes to the downhill, I'm having to wait for Matthew. <laughs> um, so we haven't actually raced today, but I think it'd be quite interesting because yes, he's had to loop back on the uphill to come and get me, but I could have dropped him about three, four times going downhill. I'm just being nice and staying with him through the Yeah, threads. but I could have put a huge gap on the uphill. <laughs> I still catch you. We wouldn't see each other for the whole race, but it'd be interesting. Anyway, sure, she meant to be recovering. A <laughs> uh, bit slippy underfoot today, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I'm just trying to do quick. This side, slippery. That's Matt's session done. Uh, Matt, Matt, man versus bike, kind of, but not really. So I reckon it would be good to actually have a crack, both of us pedal to the metal and see who would win over the course of the nine mile loop. What do you think? I reckon I got it in the bag. You reckon? Yeah. What? I reckon I took a big lead early on. He's not just straddling my, <laughs> my bike wheel, he's actually taking it off. Can you but, hold the bike, please? Um, yeah, I reckon I could get it on the downhill. I think I could just nip it in the bud. And if I'm a bit fitter on the uphill, maybe. Good session though, right? Yeah, uh, over 10 miles, average 550 per mile, including warm up and warm down. Tasty. Hmm, happy. I say fun. Um, trying to cycle at max speed when he's running. It's still really hard work. Um, but yeah, lots of mountain biking, lots of Zwift um, with the road bike indoors. And I actually treated myself to a brand new road bike because um, as I said, it's something that's going to feature in my 2021 goals. <laughs> So this is now my shed. But 
hopefully um, I will start taking my new bike out on the road. Um, but at the moment it is freezing. Um, I'm not a confident road cyclist. Um, in fact, I'm a complete beginner when it comes to road cycling. So I'm waiting for the ice to disappear um, and then hopefully go and try it out. So let's talk 2021. I have a huge goal. If you follow me on social media, you are no doubt seen already that I have announced my goal for this year. But I wanted to take this chance um, with this vlog just to explain exactly what's involved, just how big it is and delve a little bit deeper into my reasons why. So my goal this year is to Boston qualify. So this is a huge goal absolutely massive for me um, and probably the best way to show you how big it is is to show you my current PBs across distances. For Boston I'm going to have to run a 3.30 marathon and this roughly equates to the following times for the same distances. So there you go, a world of difference to where I'm currently at, but that's okay, that's where I want to be in the future. You know, it's alright that I've got to take like 5 minutes off my 5k, or what, 11 minutes off my 10k, you know, an hour and 13 minutes off my marathon, it's not much at all. So to qualify for Boston Marathon, I need to run a 335 marathon, and that is based on me being female, and the fact that I'm turning 35 this year. It's a bit of a sore point, I'm feeling older. But anyway, I'm turning 35, so I have to run a 3.35 marathon. Quite generous, some would say. But this is Boston, 3.35 just may not cut the mustard, so I am planning more for a 3.30 marathon. Now, as you can see from my marathon PB, I have, roughly, um, an hour and 10 minutes to take off. Say an hour and 13, just to be on the safe side. That is huge, absolutely huge. Um, and I have given myself this year to do it. So I've given myself quite a short time frame to do it. And the reason being is because I want to qualify in time to run for my first son's 16th birthday. My firstborn son passed away when he was two days old and he would be turning 16 next year. His name was Preston. He passed away from an incurable condition when he was two days old. A condition that wasn't truly found out until he was born and he went into surgery to find out the true extent as to what was wrong with him. Preston has been a driving force for me for a lot of the challenges and stuff that I have done from ultras to three peaks. Um, I did a three peaks solo um, in his memory and for lots of other angel babies. Um, and this was the three peaks where I broke my wrist, but carried on, carried on because um, it was important. So he does get me through some really difficult situations. I wanted to do something for his 16th, but also I wanted to do something that really is going to push me and test me in every sense of the word. When it comes to baby loss awareness, it can be difficult to talk about. It can be difficult for people who have lost babies and people who haven't lost babies but don't know how to talk to somebody who has lost a baby. But hopefully by talking about Preston and the fact that he drives me in a lot of what I do, it brings it forward and hopefully shows that it's okay to talk about it and it's okay um, to acknowledge um, that people can have horrible things happen and ho terrible losses um, but that can be a positive in the sense that it's an internal driving force that you cannot squash it's there it's you know it, it's like a, a never-ending light that somebody has so how am I going to chop off one hour and 13 minutes um, off my marathon time? Well, obviously there's an awful lot of work to be done um, and I am going balls deep. I'm throwing everything at this bad boy and I'm just going to find out. Do you know what? I may go for this and I may completely fall on my face, not enjoy the process and think never again. Uh, faster running just isn't for me. I can't achieve that level. But I won't know that until I've been through the process and I've found out. So the process, um, 
first of all, it begins with um, returning from this stress fracture because um, let's face it, that's a biggie. Um, I don't think I could be at any worse a position to start off this big goal. I'm hoping to aim for Manchester Marathon or Abingdon in um, the autumn in October time. Um, so it gives me time to build up following the stress fracture and build up in the right way. Um, I am using coaches for both running. Um, obviously Matt is my running coach um, and he's very good at what he does. So, so he will be building me up in the right way. Um, I have also enlisted the help of a strength coach because I need to get strong. I also need accountability when it comes to strength. So the first step is to um, get back into some structured training, build up my volume um, and I'm not just building up the volume with the run, whilst I am building up the running volume very gradually and safely, um, I am hammering it out on the bike also. This is my secret weapon this year to make sure that I have got a high volume um, but it's not all the high impact running. Obviously as I start running more miles then the bike may, might decrease a little bit so it'd be like um, a balance and scale so you know it might tip in favour of either or. There are a lot of things I need to approach. I need to approach nutrition. I need to make sure that my strength is good. I need to make sure that I'm listening with my runs and I'm doing my easy, easy, and I'm doing everything else at the paces that I'm supposed to be doing. I need to make sure that rest and recovery are a priority. Um, Matt always says to me that if he could um, prescribe rest and recovery as a session, he would. It is important. Um, now, I don't know kind of how, how that's gonna go. We've just entered lockdown three. Um, and yeah, homeschooling has begun again. Everybody's at home again. It's a bit pedal to the metal, um, but do you know what? I'll get through it. There will be times where I can rest somewhere. Now I know there's gonna be people out there thinking that I'm absolutely bonkers and will probably laugh at the fact that I'm trying to do such a big thing in the space of, let's face it, 10 months, less than that maybe. Um, <clears throat> you know, taking an hour and 13 minutes off your marathon time is huge. Like I said, um, I may not enjoy the process and I know I've got to do an awful lot to go through the motions and to get that time. Um, things that I haven't done before um, and it's, that's okay with me. You know, I'm willing to, what, give up 10 months of, of my life to find out, to find out if this nagging thing in my head, if I can actually do it and if I can do it, um, then that's going to be amazing. If I can't do it, then you know, I'd like to be able to turn around and say, well, I gave it everything and it, it just didn't work out, but that's okay, that's cool, because I, you know, I've, I've found out. So anyway, that's me all in for uh, Boston. I am going to be doing the weekly vlogs, um, keeping you up to date with my training, what's going on in my life, everything else, um, and we'll see how I progress. Hopefully you will stick around, uh, stay on board, and be part of the journey with me. I'd love it if you could stay involved, um, watch the free weekly vlogs, because uh, it really does help. The comments um, and messages I had since I posted on Instagram about my BQ um, kind of really stoke the fire, make me think, yeah, do you know what, let's go for it. Um, so yeah, positive vibes are always welcome. Now there are a group of girls that are joining on this journey. Um, there's five of us all together that are gonna go for the BQ this year. Um, and we've all got different lifestyles, we've all got different challenges to face, we've all got different times, um, and we're all at different abilities, but the goal is the same, we want to BQ. Um, so what I will be doing is sharing their journey as well um, and giving a monthly recap on how their training is going, what they're approaching differently to myself. But for now, let's just introduce them. So here are the other Boston Project participants. Hey guys, my name is Mara. I live in London, which is currently very, very cold. Oh, so cold. Can you see that? The cold, bruh. <laughs> anyway, uh, one of my goals this year is to achieve a Boston qualifying time at an autumn marathon. I haven't actually decided on my autumn marathon of choice. I'd love to know what your suggestions are. Uh, I uh, currently, for my training, I have just sort of finished recovering from an injury. So um, I was doing a lot of Pilates at the time, uh, which I kind of enjoyed. I'd never done Pilates before. Uh, and uh, in the form of a strength training I do uh, CrossFit I love it I think it's a great um, thing to do for especially for mental uh, strength uh, training which uh, I think is also quite important uh, for marathon training 
and I also uh, do cycling which is sort of my form of cross training and then I also do running so I do a lot uh, and you know uh, I think a lot of us can say that uh, work-life balance has blurred over the past year and I think that will be one of my challenges that I'll have to overcome during uh, marathon training for the Boston qualifying time and also uh, so I am not a fan of winter running I have Raynaud so uh, getting motivated to run in the winter is one of my struggles uh, and so but I've got to remember winter miles it means summer smiles uh, and that marathon will be my victory lap from the runner beans and my boston qualifying time goal is a sub 330 aiming for around 328 or faster i ran a 338 in edinburgh 2019 so about 10 minute pb that i'm looking to run working with a coach to set my marathon training plan we're literally starting at like two miles and we'll work our way up to 26.2 over the next nine or ten months and then doing a lot of cross training to try and improve my fitness without doing lots of high impact stuff. So peloton bike, swimming when the uh, swimming pools are open again. And also I'm really focusing on strength training this time. So working with my personal trainer um, because I just don't do it if I don't have someone shouting at me, even if it's via Zoom. So working with her twice a week um, and hopefully we'll get kind of stronger, fitter and in the best shape to run my fastest marathon yet and I'm going to be sharing it all on my Instagram and on my blog which is therunnerbeans.com Hi I'm George also known as Fitcetra on Instagram and I'm part of the Boston Project. I really want to get a BQ qualifying marathon time um, because I just have unfinished business with the marathon I've run five marathons and had two real attempts at the time that I wanted to get, which was 3.45 to four hours. I missed out narrowly by getting four hours and one minute and 37 seconds, and it still haunts me. <laughs> um, and I just want to be able to race and get a time that I think is within my capability. So I am trying for a BQ. I have just over half an hour to knock off and I'm working with a triathlon coach which isn't the standard approach to marathon training but I am prone to injury and I also like a bit of variety in my training so for me keeping that cross training in will motivate me and hopefully allow me to get the volume in without getting injured and I'm really looking forward to working with the rest of the team on this project so we can motivate and support each other along the way. I'm Kirsty. I'm going to be working with my running coach Matt and um, I'll be running five times a week incorporating strength training and a bit of yoga as well to get to the Boston qualifier goal of 335 for me. Um, my current marathon um, personal best is 336 so I'm really close to it but I'd really like to get under 330. I've done five out of the six World of Marathon majors so this would be the last one for me and that's my main goal. I look forward to getting stuck into it with all the other girls. So that's it for this week, probably a bit of a lengthy chatty vlog but I hope that you've kind of got through it and you're on board. Um, what I'd really love to know in the comments is what to call this training vlog because obviously it's going to be quite a long one, um, 10 months of a vlog, um, but I would like to call it something. So if you've got any suggestions please do leave them below in the comments. Um, I'd also love to hear from anybody else that has taken a big chunk off their marathon or if you've achieved a big goal and I'd also love to know what you are also heading for, what your goals are for for 2021. Please do subscribe, like and follow along on the journey, I would really appreciate it. Um, but until next week I'll see you soon.